Coming up on Fulton Today, tag offices around the state return to regular business hours after a complete shutdown some days last month. We'll share some important news regarding the Georgia Drives initiative. Sheriff deputies quickly put out a fire set inside the Fulton County Jail just one week after completing their Code Red mass evacuation training drills. I'm Brian Robinson and I've got a full report. And medical examiners from around the world descend on Fulton County. We'll tell you why. That and much more starts right now on Fulton Today. Welcome to Fulton Today, everybody. I'm Shania Chavis Rucker. Fulton County deputies put out a live fire inside the Fulton County Jail just days after practicing for a real emergency. Now, last week, we showed you an evacuation drill that the sheriff mandates for staff. FGTV's Brian Robinson joins us now with more on this story. And clearly, Brian, that training paid off. Shawnee, that training paid off so well that even firefighters were complimentary about how quickly order was restored here at the Rice Street facility. You're looking at surveillance video from inside the Fulton County Jail. Things appear to be calm, but if you look at the left screen, you're about to see a flashing light indicating the fire alarm has been activated. Look familiar? We told you about a similar situation last week that took place at the Alpharetta Jail. While this siren was deliberately set off by sheriff deputies for a training drill, this alarm at the Rice Street facility was set off after inmates set fire to a mattress. As smoke quickly filled the housing area, deputies and detention officers quickly sprung into action to safely remove inmates while others attacked the flames. And as it turns out, having the drill and then having an actual fire emergency really um, show the importance of how training is so very important uh, for us to do our jobs here to keep everyone safe. The Sheriff's Office routinely plans and coordinates unannounced Code Red mass evacuation drills at the main jail, the Alfreda Jail, and the Union City Jail. The training is clearly beneficial because deputies at the Fulton County Jail were able to eradicate the flames before firefighters could arrive. It's absolutely critical that jail staff train for emergencies to do both the fire extinguishment so that we can limit property damage and risk to human life, but also execute the emergency plan and remove uh, inmates from the hazard area so that no one is injured and we can keep an orderly environment. Though it's not known if this fire was intended to be a decoy to create a disorderly environment, staff were prepared just in case. Well, as part of our training, we have to also be aware that fire is sometimes used as a subterfuge for inmates to do other things that go against the security of the jail. So staff is trained to not only handle the fire emergency itself, but also maintain order with the inmates. Uh, usually that means keeping dangerous inmates away from their intended victims so that we can maintain order here at the jail. In our previous coverage about Code Red mass evacuation training stories, we showed you how inmates were transported by bus to a safe location. In this situation, inmates were temporarily relocated to another part of the jail. Now, Colonel Adger says the surveillance video helped highlight strengths and weaknesses and will be incorporated into future training exercises for new employees so they can learn from the past and be prepared for the future. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Brian Robison. All right, thank you very much, Brian. Now, for a brief period of time last month, all vehicle registration and title services were unavailable during a system upgrade to the Georgia Driver Record and Integrated Vehicle Enterprise System, better known as Georgia Drives. Now serving A. Well, the Fulton County three, Tax Commissioner's five, offices are back operating five. with normal business hours, and the system is once again operational. Fulton County Tax Commissioner Dr. Arthur Ferdinand was in our studio to share the benefits of this system. This is a new system, but we have been in training for over a year in the use of this system. They're working overtime to make sure that customers are well served. You should not see any difference to, at the counter when you go to this system. But to our employees, it is a modern system filled with all the modern technologies. The look and feel is easier. 
it's the look and feel of more than the systems when you go online to shop or when you're using your cell phone or going on the internet. So it's very, very modern in terms of the things that you can do and how it feels. Uh, but again, you should see no difference when you go to service. In addition to that, uh, to make sure things go smoothly, the new Department of Revenue um, Commissioner, uh, David Curry, he has given us about eight people to be spread around the county. We have six right down here in the, uh, our headquarters in downtown Atlanta, work with us. Those folks came from all over the country to make sure that Fulton County is well served, to make sure that we have no hiccup that we can't uh, fix. Thank you, Dr. Ferdinand. Now you can see the tax commissioner's full explanation of how the Georgia Drives initiative works during this month's airing of Commissioner Marvin Arrington's junior show, District Dialogues, right here on FGTV. Fulton's Board of Registration and Elections prepares for the county's special election for the District 6 Board of Commissioners seat. Members briefly discuss the number of candidates that have shown interest in the vacant District 6 seat and approved early voting locations for that election, the Fairburn Library, the Government Center, and the South Annex. And those state officials have yet to determine which new voting machines Georgia voters will use in the 2020 presidential election. The board and the registration and elections team discuss the county's plan for implementation once that decision is made. November has been selected. They have until the end of the month. Uh, I think either or until July 1st or to select the vendor. The size of the election um, has impacted whether we're going to be pilot county. So um, in speaking with the state, we um, kind of made the, the joint decision to forego being a pilot county for various reasons. Finally, the registration and elections team explained that some residents who have moved recently may receive a notice in the mail reminding them to update their voter registration information. The board also recognized member David Burge for his years of service. A new board member will be introduced next month. The rise of notary fraud has Fulton's clerk of superior and magistrate court trying to curb the problem. Aspiring and current Fulton County notary publics received some free training from the clerk's office. The office and the Georgia Superior Court Clerk's Cooperative Authority hosted multiple free classes inside the government center's assembly hall. Those who attended were told how to spot notary fraud and the new laws and statutes in place for notaries to abide by. The class also learned how notaries can protect themselves and the people they serve. Clerk Robinson is very, very serious about uh, our office and our role in commissioning notaries and helping prevent fraud. So we're glad that so many people decided to come out uh, and learn about this role that helps us help our citizens in Fulton County. Just a reminder, a notary public is appointed by state government to serve the public as an impartial witness during the signing of important documents. The clerk's office says they receive multiple notary complaints on a daily basis. Fulton leaders and chief medical examiner welcomes MEs from across the world as they convene here for their annual conference. FGTV's Daryl Carver has this story. Inside the Georgia Aquarium, medical examiners from around the globe gathered for the fourth annual conference in forensic and pediatric pathology. The Fulton County Medical Examiner's Office hosted the meeting in conjunction with the GBI, the University of Ottawa, and the Eastern Ontario Regional Laboratory Association. The, the collaboration and the networking with the other um, pathologists, um, pediatricians, investigators from the state and, like I said, across the, the country and abroad is, is fantastic because there's not that many of us um, and the community is small and to be able to pick up the phone and reach out because they may have seen something that we haven't seen and vice versa. The theme of this year's three-day conference was seldom say never, seldom say always, a look at exceptional cases. So it's actually a play on an old forensic adage uh, with respect to the types of cases that we see, we are taught not to be dogmatic. So seldom say that this will never happen or seldom say that it will always happen because there will always be 
some exception to the rule. Some of the topics of conversation include child abuse deaths and how to approach unnatural or unusual circumstances. These professionals know their diagnosis impacts a number of people, including the family of the victim and the accused. We need to get the answer right. If we get the answer wrong, it could have dire consequences, whether it be someone who did something got away with it or someone who didn't do something was falsely accused. This year marks the first time the Forensic and Pediatric Pathology Conference was held in the United States. For many of the medical professionals in attendance, this was so their this first visit to Atlanta. Years. They all agreed that the famous Southern hospitality lived up to its reputation, thanks to Fulton's medical examiner and her hosting partners. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Daryl Carver. Thank you, Daryl. And coming up next on Fulton Today, Fulton commissioners get a first-hand look at the renovation progress taking place inside Central Library. It's part of our district-by-district district coverage next. Fulton leaders get their first look at the renovation progress of one of the county's historic landmarks and a number of Fulton departments help to bring one street alive. Here's this week's district by district coverage. We begin with Commissioner Liz Hausman as she and county leaders check out the upgrades being made to the Central Library in downtown Atlanta. The construction crews halted their work for a few minutes to allow the executives to peruse the facility and all of the renovations made thus far. This is going to be the showcase library for our entire system. Um, it's got historical value. We've worked really hard to save the building, um, but to turn it into something that has the modern interior. So I wanted to see it before it got too far along, make sure that we're on the right path, which I think we are, and um, just wanted to monitor it as we go forward because it's such an important piece of architecture for our community. Last August, the Board of Commissioners voted to approve the $44.2 million contract for the renovations at Central Library. First thing that we saw, interestingly enough, was a hole that's been cut in the roof of this library. And that hole extends all the way down uh, through the library, creating a skylight that's going to be just phenomenal in terms of uh, its impact. The approved design and build contract was awarded to Winter Johnson Group and includes all services from design development through all phases of construction and post-construction. I am so excited about this renovation. This is going to be the firework ending of our phase two library bond program and this is going to be a centerpiece facility for years to come for downtown Atlanta. The iconic Brutalist style library was designed by architect Marcel Brewer and is expected to reopen in 2020. District 4 residents enjoy a day in the streets for a good time with the family. From the sound of music to the whir of scooters and bikes, crowds gathered for Atlanta Streets Alive. Now, Atlanta Streets Alive opens city streets for people by taking cars out of the equation for an afternoon to create a whole new healthy, sustainable and vibrant city street experience. Fulton County was well represented with the county's library system, external affairs, arts and culture department, games, healthy snacks, and plenty of bike action to go around. Atlanta Streets Alive is an initiative of the Atlanta Bicycle Coalition. So how are public pools doing when it comes to health inspections this summer? That story is next when Fulton Today returns. Fulton Citizens University students learn how the county ensures that all people are, in fact, healthy. The class took a field trip to the Center for Health and Rehabilitation. Behavioral health representatives explained how Fulton is committed to giving underinsured citizens access to care. The behavioral health team also talked about the programs they run, including their Text for Help anonymous hotline for teens, their pre-arrest diversion program, and the services available for adults with developmental disabilities. 
The Board of Health staffers explained their other responsibilities, including restaurant and hotel check inspections. Fascinating how no matter where you go, the restaurants how unsanitary they can be. And then that this department can close them down, clean it up, and put them back on the market again. It's fascinating. And then they, we learned about bed bugs and a whole array of stuff, as well as um, behavioral problems and what the outreach program is having. So tonight was really important, uh, addressing the mental health uh, population or individuals with disabilities, how it really is everybody's responsibility. So that if we have people in our communities that need access to services that will address their mental health, allowing them to be functioning adults or their families that we should speak up. And I like that tonight because I can be an advocate even though it doesn't affect me directly. I have now um, access to those services and resources that can benefit that population. Next week, the class visits the Johns Creek Environmental Campus to learn about public works and the Department of Real Estate and Asset Management. And speaking of inspections, Fulton's Environmental Health Deputy Director is giving high marks to all of the summer hotspots that have been properly inspected. And that includes public pools and eating establishments. This year is probably one of the smoothest years we've had with all the uh, openings. Um, we didn't turn anybody down. We had all the staff move from food services, tourist accommodations, body arts, even our septic inspectors. We moved them all to the pool inspections to assure that almost every pool could come into compliance and open up by Memorial Day weekend. Uh, it's the summertime. There's more festivals. There's more fairs. There's more concerts. That means more food trucks. So you're going to have more temporary events for food trucks and food truck vendors. The Department of Environmental Health Team wants to know if you spot pools or eating establishments that are not clean. Check out the Board of Health's website and click on the Environmental Health tab at the top of the page. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, injuries are the leading cause of death for Americans ages 1 to 44. Now, the good news is there are many things that people can do to stay safe and prevent injuries. June is National Safety Month when individuals and organizations participate by making efforts to reduce the leading causes of unintentional injury and death at work, on the road, and in homes and in communities. Ladisa Onilagu is the director of Fulton's Senior Services Department. Ladisa, welcome back. It's a pleasure being with you. So share with us the significance of this Observance Month as it relates to our senior population. National Safety Month primarily focuses on reducing the leading causes of injury and death at work, but there is a direct correlation to the older adults and fall prevention. We know that falling frequently significantly increases as you age, so it's important to bring awareness to this month's observance. And are there any prevalent causes and risk factors for falls? Yes, there are many causes, some of which are changes to your hearing or eyesight, even medication that could cause dizziness or sleepiness. I think one of the greatest risks, though, is that the fear of falling um, and maybe the embarrassment or the psychological aspect of it is that it causes seniors to avoid activities that are critical for them to maintain their independence. So share with anyone how seniors can take the right steps to prevent falls. It's important to stay physically active. Uh, you should also be aware of any side effects of new medication that you're taking. If you've fallen since your last doctor's appointment, make sure you alert your doctor to what happened. Um, but then, of course, I would encourage any senior to contact our multipurpose facilities and enroll in any of our fitness courses that support balance. And wrap it up for me, Ladisa, your final thoughts? Yes, it's important for seniors to conduct an assessment of their home to check for any trip hazards. Uh, make sure that you're always aware of your surroundings inside of the home and especially outside in your community. And to learn more about our programs in the Department of Senior Services that supports your safety and health, call the Star Line at 404-613-6000. Ladisa Onilagu, Director of Fulton Senior Services Department. Always great information. Thanks again for your time. Thanks so much for having me. And still to come on Fulton today, a group of youngsters learn about the ups and downs of space exploration. Stay with us, everybody.
another library is officially closed for renovations. The Cleveland Avenue Library is no longer available for the next six to nine months. Library representatives want to remind patrons that the services the Cleveland Avenue Library offers are now available at the Metropolitan, Southeast, and South Fulton Libraries. Alternate libraries can be found by logging on to afpls.org slash locations or by using the library system's library locator tool. The renovation of the Cleveland Avenue Library is part of the Phase 2 project of the library's capital improvement project. And finally, a group of children receive an out-of-this-world lecture about space. Youngsters at the Adamsville Collier Heights Library learned about the ups and downs of space exploration through a program called Space Monkeys and Starry Messengers. Storyteller Barry Stewart Mann took the young kids on a journey of the unknown cosmic world. He explained to the young audience that their participation and interaction was necessary if they wanted to see science and history come alive. The kids were delightful. They were very receptive, very enthusiastic. I incorporate into the program a lot of opportunities for participation, whether they are in the audience calling things out, giving me ideas, repeating things, and then there are a lot of chances for kids to come up on stage and put on costume pieces, play characters, and things like that. I learned that May wanted to go to space, but everyone else doubted her on what she thought, what she wanted to do in her mind. Now this story time was part of the Fulton County Library System's summer reading program. And it's basically to enhance reading, to encourage children to come to the library while school is out. They'll have some various fun activities. And it's also supposed to bridge the gap from school closing and summertime. So when they return to school, they'll be either on reading level or above reading level. Once again, this year's theme is a universe of stories. You can stay up to date about all the programs at all of the branches by logging on to AFPLS.org. And before we go, our reminder that FGTV wants to connect with you online. Be sure to follow FGTV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for up-to-date Fulton County news. And you can watch a replay of this show and any other FGTV program anytime on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. I'm Shania Chavis-Rucker. Thank you so much for watching. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.